Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So we are uh, considering the uh, fluid uh, flow equations uh, for um, gas dynamic flows and uh, previous classes we looked at uh, general uh, integral and differential forms of these equations. Now uh, let us become more uh, specific and uh, look at a particular assumption that is uh, uh, very often used to understand uh, gas dynamic flows and it is quite uh, useful mm, which is the quasi 1D assumption. Uh, so what uh, does this quasi uh, 1D assumption imply? Let us take uh, for example uh, flows in uh, ducts or in long pipes if you look at the um, distribution of uh, uh, the velocities they have uh, if you uh, just uh, move away from uh, the uh, entrance length which is over here which is where there is uh, changes of um, uh, the profile but after the entrance length uh, the velocity profile is more or less frozen into this particular uh, shape this is for a laminar profile while for a uh, turbulent uh, case the profile will be more sharp and um, then having a more uh, rounded off uh, shape um, in the center. So, uh, now there can we can uh, come up with an equivalent uh, uh, sort of uh, profile or equivalent profile which has a constant um, velocity or the, the flow uh, property is constant across the entire cross section of the duct. So, in order to do that uh, the uh, principles that we use are the still the same that all uh, conservations should be followed. So, uh, this is a uh, the one dimensional uh, profile uh, having a constant velocity v ok. Now, if you uh, look at uh, the shapes for the laminar profile and uh, the turbulent profile, you see that uh, turbulent profile more or less approximates this constant uh, property across the duct while uh, for laminar profile the variation is uh, quite uh, significant. So, uh, this is a simplification that can be used in order to understand uh, how uh, the flow behaves in many different uh, scenarios. So, uh, there are many different things that can change in a um, compressible flow. Uh, like you have uh, changes in uh, the uh, duct area or you could have certain heat being added to the flow or you could have uh, that there is uh, a uh, force of friction which is always present in these uh, flows. So, uh, this uh, quasi 1D assumption where you say that flow variables are uniform across every cross section. So, if you consider a variable uh, duct then uh, across each cross section you are uh, saying that um, that the flow variables like velocity, pressure and uh, temperature are uniform, but uh, they can change uh, along the duct. So, along if this I consider as x direction along x direction they can uh, change, but across uh, this coordinate that is the transverse or y or if it if you consider uh, this as an axisymmetric this can be r. Mm, so, uh, in along those uh, coordinates uh, the mm, uh, flow variables are constant. This is a particular assumption which is the uh, quasi 1D assumption and it is uh, quite uh, reasonably close to um, turbulent flows because they are uh, real uh, actual velocity profiles have a uh, similar nature uh, and uh, mm, uh, uh, it is a very useful tool 
in order to understand these uh, different forcing uh, due to area friction and uh, heat addition. So, uh, as taking this assumption one can derive uh, a separate set of um, conservation equations and uh, uh, bear in mind that this uh, quasi 1 D assumption is applicable when there are only gradual changes to uh, area friction and so on. If sudden changes in area happen then uh, it is not possible to uh, use this approach to come with reasonable um, uh, estimates. So, uh, let us uh, take the uh, integral form of the uh, uh, mass conservation equation, we are considering only steady flows uh, because of that this term is 0 and that is due to the unsteady term and we have only the flux term across the uh, control uh, surface that is rho v uh, and uh, n d a that is v dot n d a uh, and now uh, the velocity is considered to be uniform across the uh, cross section. So, if I consider a cross section here a and then the velocity profile is uh, uniform at uh, v. So, uh, then this is nothing but this integration directly gives us uh, so is density not just uh, velocity density temperature pressure they are considered to be uniform across the cross section. So, this will be uh, rho v multiplied by uh, a that is the area of that um, duct or that uh, particular cross section. So, uh, then if we consider two such uh, cross sections uh, then uh, this uh, uh, statement of mass conservation implies uh, rho 1 v 1 or rho v a is constant or uh, rho 1 v 1 a 1 equal to rho 2 v 2 a 2. Now, v is just uh, a uh, variable uh, is just uh, one value that is uh, it is a uniform velocity here. So, given rho v a is constant uh, it can be written in the differential form also t rho by rho plus t v by v plus d a by a equal to 0. This comes by just differentiating rho v a equal to 0. Okay. So, if you differentiate this you will get uh, this form of the equation. So, uh, in the integral form it is rho v a is constant and in differential form d rho by rho plus d v by v plus d a by a equal to uh, 0. Now, uh, when we consider uh, conservation of momentum, uh, there are two uh, kinds. One you can consider in a 1D duct, uh, that is, uh, the area cross sectional area of the duct does not change, so it remains constant. So, it is A everywhere. So, uh, the other one is that you can consider a variable area duct uh, which has a, a gradual change in area. A slight differences in the analysis though the principle is the same. Again if you write the integral form of the um, uh, momentum conservation uh, and consider steady flows uh, then uh, the um, unsteady term is 0. Uh, then you are left with the fluxes and the control surfaces. and uh, you are uh, generally the shear forces are neglected. So, this term is neglected and so is uh, the body force term. Body force term is also neglected and mainly because the forcing is uh, due to pressure. Um, and uh, so, uh, since uh, the uh, uh, velocity and density have uniform profiles, uh, this uh, integration turns out to be uh, rho v square. So, rho v square mm, and you have two sections. So, 1 and uh, 2. So, this will be rho 2 v 2 square a 2 minus rho 1 v 1 square a 1. So, which is the term that comes right here and uh, the, then coming to the uh, uh, pressure forces. Uh, the pressure forces have negative signs. So, this is 
uh, actually minus p2 minus p1 multiplied by a where a is remaining constant so this uh, uh, is considered over here now uh, this if you do the rearrangement you come to the fact also using the fact that a1 is equal to a2 you can uh, write p plus rho v square equal to constant now this is valid uh, for um, only uh, one dimensional ducts this integral uh, form p plus uh, rho v square equal to constant for one dimensional duct but when you come to uh, uh, ducts which are quasi 1d that means there is a gradual change in area then uh, when you consider this momentum equation it has to be considered uh, carefully uh, by considering the area change also because now when you consider the pressure forces uh, in the 1d case uh, since pressure is uniform the integral of pressure over the uh, uh, lateral surface uh, lateral surface will turn out to be zero because they of the cancellation of forces and only uh, the pressure uh, force at along the x direction will be affecting but in uh, variable uh, area ducts which have gradual changes in area then uh, you see that uh, there is a component of the uh, pressure force uh, that varying pressure force along the wall or along the lateral surface that will appear along the x direction it is uh, we can uh, get that uh, particular force also so uh, this has to be considered uh, a little bit uh, more carefully so here uh, we have um, in this case a, a very gradually varying uh, area with a certain uh, divergence say theta and uh, the forces uh, the uh, variables are uh, p rho uh, v a on the left hand side and on the right hand side uh, there is a small change in them p plus d p rho plus d rho a plus d a uh, and so on this force is due to uh, gravity body force that is f5 okay so now let's consider this so uh, this has to be considered now uh, now the integration uh, can be performed uh, mm, because you are considering uh, uniform variable so uh, you have on the left hand side this nothing but integral of uh, rho v v dot n da so this is uh, rho v square multiplied by a which can also be written as m dot into v that where m dot is constant so that is how this term comes about m dot is v plus dv minus that is the left hand side which is uh, rho a v dv ok so now uh, coming to the um, the uh, right hand side of the equation these are the different force terms that is the forces uh, due to uh, now all of them we are considering only along the x direction so that has to be borne in mind so uh, let us uh, the force on the uh, left surface the right surface the lateral surface viscous force and the body force now uh, pressure force on the pressure force on the left surface so this is pressure force on the left surface which is uh, p a p multiplied by a so this has to be l and while on the pressure force on the right surface is uh, p plus dp uh, multiplied by a plus uh, da so this can be expanded uh, and you are considering uh, dp da is very small that can be neglected it can be neglected so if you consider that uh, uh, condition then you can write um, this equation as uh, p a minus p d a minus a d p now you have to consider the pressure on the uh, the force on the lateral surface due to variation of pressure now um, and the component that appears along the x direction so 
uh, this is the force and the component appearing so this is theta actually so uh, that component appearing along the x direction is uh, has this sin theta component mm, now mm, so the mean pressure so the force on the lateral surface area is uh, the mean pressure multiplied by wall area uh, multiplied by the uh, sign uh, sign of that component and if you do that the mean pressure is p plus dp by 2 and uh, if you do that the sign component actually turns out to be uh, da that is the change in area so you get p plus dp by 2 multiplied by uh, da it's mean pressure multiplied by what now uh, the viscous force is um, the shear stress uh, along the wall uh, multiplied by the perimeter uh, area which is uh, you can look at these and uh, if this is dl this is dl cos theta it is along the x direction so it is along the uh, x direction and uh, you can use uh, the definition of the frictional uh, factor that is or the coefficient of uh, friction so there are two kinds which can be used the way it is defined over here this is the friction factor which is f is 4 times by half rho v square okay uh, while this term tau wall by half rho v square is the coefficient of friction so uh, and uh, thus uh, the viscous term if this can be considered a mean friction factor then the viscous term is uh, given by f rho v square by 2 and a dx by d okay and uh, the body force is nothing but mean density multiplied by the volume and uh, multiplied by the uh, gravity constant and uh, the component that has to be considered along x direction is the cos phi term so uh, once that is done mm, then uh, you will get uh, g d l cos phi which is here okay this is the component along the x direction and d l cos phi is actually d z so you get uh, rho a g uh, d z now you can finally sum everything up so once you uh, sum up everything then uh, you are left with uh, this equation so and you can uh, divide throughout by um, rho a uh, v so once you uh, divide everything by uh, rho a that is this term then you get dp by rho plus v dv plus f v square by 2 uh, dx by de plus g dz equal to 0. So, uh, if you neglect body and viscous forces then uh, what we get is dp by rho plus v dv equal to 0 this is the Euler's equation. So, uh, now we see that for a quasi 1 d uh, duct the final equation is of uh, this form. And when you are considering quasi 1 deducts you have to be really careful uh, with uh, the analysis and should consider the lateral uh, forces also. Now having considered mass and momentum now we come to the uh, energy equation. Now, when we look at this uh, energy equation, uh, again we are considering steady flows. So, for steady flow energy equation, you have um, H plus V square by 2 plus uh, Gz, uh, uh, H is the enthalpy and uh, uh, on the uh, right hand side you have uh, net uh, heat added to the uh, system and work done by the system. Okay. So, uh, now, uh, you can this is the total energy total energy is uh, h1 plus v1 square by 2 plus gz um, that is now since all parameters are um, 
uh, constant you get uh, rho v a that integral multiplied by h plus v square by 2 uh, plus g z this will be the integral uh, across two surfaces so going from uh, 1 to 2 so uh, this is the integral so this is nothing but mass flow rate m dot and um, this is the total energy h plus v square by 2 plus g z that is what is written over here m dot e t 2 minus e t 1 total energy is equal to q dot uh, minus w dot. So, uh, now uh, this has been uh, expanded and you can write this in terms of enthalpy. Uh, so, this is the final equation that you get after uh, integrating q dot plus uh, w dot this can be differentiated also and this is the rate at which the heat is added uh, and rate at which work is done and uh, d h plus d v square by 2 plus uh, g d z. So, uh, if you look at all the quasi 1 d relations you have uh, uh, in the integral form the mass flow rate total mass flow rate through the system remains constant that is rho u a equal to rho v a equal to constant. And if you differentiate it you get the rho by rho plus d v by v plus d a by a equal to 0. Now, if you consider the momentum in a 1 d duct then it is p plus rho v square equal to constant while in a quasi 1 d duct that is the area is changing very gradually the uh, relevant equation is uh, d p by rho plus v d v plus uh, this is the friction term and this is the body force term and if these are negligible d p by rho plus v d v equal to 0. For a quasi 1 d duct uh, the uh, energy conservation is the total uh, change of energy is related to uh, heat added and uh, work done and it can be written even in the uh, differential form. So, now uh, having considered this uh, quasi 1 d relations is a, uh, a very useful assumption to make that the flow variables are constant across every cross section and then we can see how uh, if there is a variation of area uh, or if there is a heat addition or if there is friction. Uh, how it affects the uh, various uh, flow parameters and that is what we would be doing in further classes. Immediately in the next class we will apply the 1 d relations uh, to look at uh, how to uh, see the speed of um, sound, how we can estimate the uh, speed of sound. It will be a sort of application of these uh, uh, material that we have just covered at the same time we will also get to know how we can estimate uh, speed of sound.